Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ryan Retro channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install a beautiful front end launcher for the Retroid Pocket 5. If you've seen my previous content, you'll have seen it many times and you've probably seen other YouTubers use it as well because it is gorgeous. The front end looks like this and it's called ESDE, Emulation Station Desktop Edition. On most systems, it is completely free. However, on Android, you do need to pay a few dollars to join the Patreon in order to download it. The Patreon is four euros 50 for the Android supporter perk, which lets you download the APK. I would say it's definitely worth it as an easy way to launch all your games. It looks beautiful and I feel like it really just completes a device like this. So I already purchased it. So I will now show you how to install it and set it up. Once you purchase it, you'll be able to download the APK and then you can simply just install it just like any other app. Let's open it up and get it set up. It has a very nice, easy to use and straightforward interface. So let's choose begin setup, open the permission screen to accept the permission of it managing our files. We'll of course need to let it manage our files so that it can collect all of our game files and launch them for us. Now we need to choose a couple of directories. The first one will be where ESDE saves all of its settings and it recommends you use a folder named ESDE. So let's choose select directory. I will go to the Retroid Pocket 5 home directory. And what I did was create a new folder and I called it as recommended ESDE. When you create the folder, you can then choose use this folder, allow access, and now it will save all of its information in that folder. So it will be simple for you to find at any time. Next, you need to tell it where your games are. So select your games directory. For me, this is on my SD card and then ROMs. So I will choose use this folder, allow. Now it will ask you if you want to let ESDE create directories for you. This will create a ton of directories and put systeminfo.txt files inside where it can store information. If this is your first time doing this, I would suggest you do it and then move all of your game files into these directories created by ESDE. I've already done this. So you can see this is my ROMs folder and it is just filled with all of these different directories that were created for me by ESDE. And this could also be where you might run into a problem later, because if you do create these directories, but then you have your own different directories, ESDE might not be able to find your games. For example, I was trying to find Nintendo DS games inside ESDE and it couldn't see my games. This is because ESDE creates a folder for Nintendo DS games called NDS, but I had my games in my own folder called Nintendo DS. So when ESDE was searching this NDS folder for games, it couldn't find any. So I had to copy my games from my own Nintendo DS folder into the NDS folder made by ESDE. And for one more example, ESDE also creates a folder called GC, which is for GameCube. But I had my GameCube files in my own folder called GameCube. So ESDE couldn't see them because it was searching in the GC folder. So by copying the files from my GameCube folder into ESDE's GC folder, all the games suddenly appeared. So if you have any issues where your games are not showing up in ESDE, just check they're in the correct folders. So as I've already created all of these folders the last time I installed ESDE, this time I'm going to skip creating the directories. But if it's your first time using ESDE, I recommend you let it create directories for you and you then move your games over into those directories. ESDE is now set up, so let's continue. We will now jump into ESDE and by default, it looks like this. It's a very nice skin, but I'm going to change it to the one that I like to use. So I'm going to push the start button. I will go down to UI settings and theme downloader. Proceed and here you can look through and choose what theme you'd like. There are so many nice ones. As you go through, you can see screenshots of how they'll look. The one that I like to use is Iconic. So I will choose that and it will download it for me. When it's downloaded, you will get a little check mark next to the name. Let's go back and now let's choose our theme. So now that it's downloaded, let's go down to theme 
and let's choose Iconic. Now when you go back, it will apply the theme. We now have our beautiful Iconic theme, and I will customize it just a little bit more. If I go into a game directory like this, you will see we have this list view, whereas I want to see the box art. So by pushing start, going down to UI settings, and then theme variant, here you can change the style of theme you want. I'm going to choose grid box art. Let's choose that and now go back and back again, and you'll see a problem. We don't have any pictures for anything. Thankfully, ESDE can scrape through all of this and get pictures for you. So in order to do that, we push start, and the very first option is scraper. Let's choose that. Scrape from, you have screen scraper or the games DB. I always just use screen scraper, but I think both are fine. You can choose which games you want to scrape. And by scrape, it means scour the internet and find information and pictures for. So which games do you want to do that for? You'll probably want to do that for all of your games, but you can choose only games that don't have images, only games that don't have videos, just your favorite games, etc. For now, because this is new, I'm going to choose all games. Then you can choose which systems you want to scrape games for. Do you want to scrape games only for Nintendo 64? Do you want to scrape games for Nintendo 64 and Nintendo Wii? It's up to you. I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and choose select all. So every box is checked. Let's go back. Now you can see I'm scraping 22 systems. And the last thing I'll do here is choose content settings. This is what do you want to scrape? And ideally you would scrape everything, but it takes a very long time. For me personally, I only care about the game name and the box art. So I'm going to uncheck everything else except box cover image and game name. So now we will be scraping the game name and the box cover image. Let's go back. Let's go all the way down to the bottom and we will choose start. Now it's going to get to work finding box art and game names for us. And this might take a while, especially if you have a lot of games. So it's the perfect time to go get a snack, maybe watch a bit of TV, and then come back when all your games will be finished. I don't have too many games compared to some people, but you can see I do have 756 games that need to be scraped. So I'm definitely going to go and get a snack. Around 38 minutes later, it finally finished updating all the box art. 500 games were successfully scraped and 200 were skipped. That's a shame, but anyway, let's move on and see how it looks. Now when we click OK and go back, you'll see all of the box art updating. I have multiple copies of multiple games. That's my own fault. Don't worry about that. I've just messed up my ROM folder a little bit. But when you go back and look at your consoles, you can now swipe across. You can see how many games you have for each system here and go into each directory and look at your games. And it's a beautiful way of navigating games. When you launch a game, it will open in either a RetroArch core or a standalone emulator. So for example, if we try to launch Gran Turismo for the PSP, you can see it's now launching the game. But in some cases, you might just get a black screen because you haven't downloaded the RetroArch core or configured the emulator properly. So let's go into the settings and set up which emulator or RetroArch core is launched for each system. So going down to other settings, we can choose alternative emulators at the top. And here we can pick which emulator is being used for each system. So for PSP, I want to use the PPSSPP app. So going into ESDE, let's scroll down to PSP and let's select that. By default, it's using the PPSSPP core of RetroArch, which I haven't installed yet, which is why I got a black screen. So what we need to do to get that running is to go into RetroArch and install a new core. I explained how to do this in the video I uploaded yesterday, all about setting up RetroArch. But to quickly show you now, we can just choose load core, Go down to download a core, and in this case, we need to download the PPSSPP core. So scrolling down, here is Sony PlayStation Portable PPSSPP. So let's download that. You'll see the little progress bar at the bottom. It's now installed. So now when we go back into ESDE, last time when we tried to launch this game, we got a black screen because the PPSSPP core wasn't installed. Now when we launch the game, 
it will launch completely fine into RetroArch. I personally prefer to use standalone launchers to RetroArch, that's just how I like to do things. So if you'd like to do that as well, you can press start, go down to other settings, alternative emulators, and then under PSP, instead of PPSSPP default, we can change it to PPSSPP standalone. Standalone means it will not use a RetroArch core, it will use a standalone application. So it will use the PPSSPP app. So by choosing that, and going back, now when we launch the game, it will launch it in the PPSSPP app. If you want to remove the on-screen display, you're going to have to do that in the PPSSPP app itself. Or if you're using a RetroArch core and you see the on-screen display, you'll need to remove that in RetroArch. So just as an example, this is using PPSSPP. So if we close this down, if we go into PPSSPP, go to Settings, Controls, On-screen Touch Controls, and we've turned that off now. So now when we, for the last time, launch Gran Turismo, it will launch in the PPSSPP standalone application, and there will be no on-screen controls. We'll just be using the controls built into the Retroid Pocket 5. You can see everything works well, the controller is automatically mapped, and you're ready to play. Now I have one more thing to show you, which is when you go into other settings, alternative emulators, you might notice some systems are missing, such as the Nintendo Switch. In order to fix this, we need to go to this GitHub page, which I will link in the description of this video. This is the ESDE Android Custom Systems. This will add support for these following systems, including the Wii U and Switch. Here you can see the installation instructions. It's very simple. You just need to go to this green button, tap that, and choose download zip. You can then go to RAR and open that zip file. So navigate to where you downloaded the file, choose ESDE Android Custom Systems main.zip and extract it. Now going to the file manager. I extracted the file into this ESDE Android Custom Systems main folder. Inside there we have two XML files and a readme file. You don't need the readme file because you're watching me. So just take these two XML files, choose the three dots, move to, and we're going to move these to that ESDE folder we made earlier, and then custom systems inside this folder. So choose move, then let's close down ESDE and open it once again. And now when we push start, go down to other settings, alternative emulators, when you scroll all the way down, you will now see an option for Switch games. So you can choose which emulator you'd like to load them in. And also while we're here, let's turn off that button overlay that keeps popping up with all the buttons we don't need. So let's go back to the main menu, input device settings, and where it says enable touch overlay, let's just turn that off and say okay. Now we will no longer have the touch overlay. Everything is now perfectly set up and you should be able to choose any console you'd like and jump into a game. So for one last example, for Dolphin, I'm a big fan of the standalone Dolphin emulator. So I'm going to push start, go down to other settings, alternative emulators, and for GameCube, GC, by default it just says Dolphin, which means it's using the Dolphin core of RetroArch, but I'm going to choose Dolphin Standalone. Standalone means the app. So by choosing that, you only have to do it one time for each system. It will remember your choice. So now when we jump into GameCube, I can choose a GameCube game I'd like to play. For example, I want to play Ace Golf. So let's choose that. And it's going to open in the Dolphin emulator. And just like that, we're teeing off on a beautiful golf course. When you're done with the game, you can simply close it down and jump back into ESDE and you'll be ready to play another one. And one last thing I'd like to show you is if you really love ESDE and you want it to be the default launcher of your device instead of the standard Android launcher or maybe the Retroid launcher, you can go to the settings, go down to apps, default apps, home app, and you can change this from Quick Step or Retroid launcher to ESDE. And now this is the default home screen of your device. So when you turn on the Retroid Pocket 5, you'll be straight into ESDE, ready to launch some games. If you close all your other apps, it will take you straight back to ESDE. And then when you're in a game and you quit the game by closing it or by pushing the home button two times, 
it will take you straight back to ESDE. So if this is all you want out of your device to be able to quickly launch games in a beautiful launcher, this is something you can do. The only issue arises when you then want to use Android apps because they can be quite hard to find in the launcher. And in fact, I cannot find a way to access any of my apps now. So I need to change my launcher back. And if you don't know how to get back into your regular launcher, you can simply swipe down from the top of the screen, choose the settings cog, and then from here, once again, go to apps, default apps, home app, and then change it to whatever you want. And I think on a powerful device like the Retroid Pocket 5, where you can do so many things beyond gaming, such as browsing the internet, watching videos on Netflix, or YouTube, watching fantastic YouTubers like Ryan Retro and subscribing. I think it makes more sense to use a launcher like this where you can constantly just switch between anything you like. So that was a guide on how to set up ESDE. If you follow this guide, you should now have everything set up. You should be able to play any games you like, launching them with a beautiful launcher. I hope it was helpful. If it was, please give me a like, share a comment below and subscribe. And if you'd like to pick up your own Retroid Pocket 5, the one I'm using in this video, you can check out the official Retroid website with my affiliate link in the description. It's the same place I bought this one. Thank you very much for watching today and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.